So um, I'm here just very briefly to introduce to you um, Casey Sullins, who is going to do a resume writing workshop with us tonight. We're so excited. Casey joins us as the employer relations manager at the Ford School of Public Policy. Um, and I am just thrilled to have her here tonight. So thank you so much, Casey. And the floor is yours. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really excited to, to talk to all of you. Um, I love talking about resumes and all things job related. Um, yeah, so really, really happy to be here. Um, before I get started, I just wanted to provide you all with a bit of context about my background before we head into the presentation. Um, so before I came to the Ford School in 2016, um, I was working in the private sector um, first as a recruiter for um, the, the big three um, automotive industry, um, primarily General Motors. And um, then I was at Thomson Reuters as an HR um, as an HR partner. So that's a little bit about my perspective as we head into talking about um, how we create a resume. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and I'm going to ask for some grace because when I share my screen, my Zoom goes away, and so I get a little disoriented. Um, so one second here. Is everyone able to see my screen? I think Great. so, yes. Perfect, awesome. Do I still have you? Beautiful, <laughs> all right. Um, so we're gonna talk about best practices um, for resume building. Um, I will ask um, that you hold questions until the end because I more likely than not will, will probably answer it throughout the presentation. Um, but like I said, happy to answer um, any questions after the presentation. If you're worried that you are going to forget your question, feel free to pop it in the chat and, and um, I'll take a look at it from there. So first and foremost, I know that we were kind of having this conversation earlier um, in the meeting, but what exactly is a resume? So a resume is a document that is going to be highlighting your, your skills and showing how you have used those skills to make an impact at past experiences that you've had. We'll get into specific experiences um, later and in, in kind of what that entails and what that means. Um, most importantly, it's going to explain your key experiences as well as your achievements. Um, again, this can be in a variety of sectors. It can be in a, um, a professional work environment. It can be um, during a volunteer or service opportunity that you've had. Um, it could be, you know, as a, as a service member, maybe you are on student council or maybe you're part of, of student government. Um, so all of these things are experiences that kind of craft and shape our skills and experiences that we're bringing into a profession, some sort of professional setting. Um, and this is really important and, and I can touch on this a little bit later, but it's important that you keep in mind that you should be altering and tailoring your resume a little bit each time for each new opportunity that you're applying for, because it will make your um, your resume that much stronger. And like I said, we'll get into that in a little bit. So what is a resume not? This is super important. A resume is not an exhaustive history of all of the experiences that you've had in your entire life. That said, um, I think it's always a good idea to kind of create some sort of master document with experiences that you've had. Um, again, whether that's service, um, whether that's volunteer experience um, or professional um, opportunity that you've had. Um, and like, like I mentioned, you should be tailoring and adding new experiences to the opportunity that you're applying for. So why is a resume important? First and foremost, it promotes you. Um, it is a, um, I like to think of a, a resume as a little bit of a storybook about your life. Um, when I look at your resume and when I read your resume, I should have some sort of idea of experiences that you've had in the past and what you're looking to do and how you're looking to utilize, utilize those skills in the future. Um, and you know the resume is going to create a positive first impression, hopefully. Um, and we'll talk about how how that resume can um, be really strong and can um, make you stand out in a positive light. And it also explains to the recruiter, the hiring manager, whoever is reviewing your resume for the first time, it's telling them why you are the best person 
for that job. Um, but also keeping in mind that your resume is not going to get you the job. The goal of your resume is to get you an interview for the job. So some questions that you are going to want to ask yourself as you are sitting down to craft your resume, maybe even potentially for the very first time, um, what skills and opportunities do I have? Um, and again, you can take sample job postings, you can take sample service opportunities, things like that, and just be really thinking about what skills was I using um, when I was having this experience? What experiences can I highlight that demonstrate those skills? And ultimately, how can I connect my skills to that particular employer? So just some brief um, general kind of guidelines as to how you should be crafting your resume. Um, this is really important. Um, make sure that your font is between 10 and 12 point. Um, ideal being the 11. If it's anything smaller than 10, then it gets really hard to see. Um, if it's anything larger than 12, then it may come across that you're not utilizing the space of the resume properly. Um, it just looks more, it looks a little cleaner um, when your font is between those sizes. Um, margins within a reasonable range, um, and that is going to help minimize that white space or that empty space. Um, and ideally, this, this resume is going to be one page. Um, at this point, I would I would strongly recommend not going above one page, but there there are some there are some exceptions um, to to creating a resume that's longer than two pages, but we'll get to that um, a little bit later. Um, ultimately, you're wanting your resume to be organized in a clean way so that whoever's looking at your resume can find all of the information that they need. It should be easy to read. And the, um, the really important information should be digestible in a way that I, as the recruiter, could look at this resume and scan it for 30 seconds and have a pretty good idea as to if you are a fit for this position or not. Um, and also very important is consistent formatting. And we'll talk about what that looks like and what that means and I'll, as we go through the presentation. So sections of a resume. So these are some, uh, some kind of standard sections. Um, so you're going to want to have your header. So your header is going to be your name your, and your contact information. That is really critical that you um, include that information. I can't even tell you how many times I've looked at a resume and um, I've been interested in a candidate, but there's no contact information. Um, so super important to have a, an email address and or a phone number. Um, some other areas that you're definitely going to want to include at the top of the resume is going to be your education. And then um, from there, you're going to list your experience. Now, when I say experience, we're talking about a variety of formats of experience. We could be talking about, you know, explicitly professional work experience that you've had. Maybe you've worked at Target, maybe you've worked at Starbucks. Additionally, maybe you've had some leadership experience. Maybe you've served on some, um, some school government councils or things of that nature. Activities, were you involved in any extracurriculars? Are you involved in any clubs? Are you um, volunteering for any organizations? Have you been involved in research? Have you created any publications? Do you speak any languages? So these are different elements that you can kind of use to spice up your resume. Um, and ultimately your resume is, is a really personal document that's unique to you. And ultimately you're going to wanna to be comfortable using this document. And it's important to know that no two resumes are going to look the same because no people are, are the same. No people have the same experience. Um, and even if they did, they may be choosing to highlight some different experiences um, for, for whatever they're applying to. Honors and awards, certifications, these are good things to kind of also keep in mind things that you can add, um, add within your resume. So the hard things that I am going to request when you are, and recommend when you're creating your resume is to list explicitly in that order, your header, so your name and your contact information, your education, and then your experience, with your experience obviously being a combination of leadership activities, experiences that you've had. 
um, there's no particular order. And I've seen people list that experience in, in tons of different ways. And I'm happy to provide some examples um, later as we go on. Um, so as we talk about contact information, there are a few ways that you can list um, list your contact information. These three variations are kind of like the standard way. Um, and you can see that they, they vary in, in space and size and how much space it's taking on the resume. And one item that I did want to mention and point out is you don't necessarily have to list your home address. You can list your current city or your state or additionally, you can list your email address and a phone number. You don't necessarily have to list a physical address. And I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions um, that, that folks may have on that. Education. So again, employers just by and large um, really like to see that education right at the top. So they're not necessarily digging through your resume and your document to find what your educational qualifications are. Um, and so we have a way, so this slide um, shows how you can list your education experience. So you'll list your school name, um, so University of Michigan, the degree that you received, and then potentially you can also add any other relevant information, um, such as were you a scholarship recipient? Um, sometimes when people like to include GPA on their resumes, this is a good place to put that, um, as well as any additional coursework that you've had. Um, and coursework is a good place to, or is a good thing to list on a resume under the education se section, especially if you're applying for an opportunity where you may not have um, quote unquote real world experience. Maybe you don't have professional experience doing quant quantitative analysis, but maybe you've taken a class on quantitative analysis. So that would be a good area to list, um, list that coursework that you've done to show the to show the employer, whoever is going to be reviewing your resume, hey, I may not have done this, um, but I have taken coursework on it. So again, I, I feel like a little bit of a broken record. So your experience is, think of that more broadly and more robustly. Um, so draw from work, school, volunteer experience, um, leadership experience and use strong action verbs. You don't want to be using the same verb over and over again. Um, you don't want to be repetitive um, in, in your language. And, and I can provide you, I'll actually show you some examples of some strong action verbs. And after the presentation, I will be sending Olivia some materials. So I'll send um, this presentation deck as well as a list of action verbs um, so that you guys will be able to to keep that um, document. And so you're going to want to thoroughly explain your responsibilities, your tasks, your results, what you are doing. And um, in the next few slides, I'll, I'll show you what that means. Um, and just make sure that you're using acronyms and technical terms carefully. When you're using an acronym for the first time in a resume, you want to write it out fully the first time and then from there, you can start using acronyms. So um, talking about thoroughly explaining your responsibilities, there is a slick little way to do this. Um, so you want to think action, context, result. Um, ACR is, is another um, way that you can remember it. Um, but action, so every bullet point, you're highlighting a skill that's required for the opportunity that you're applying to. You are providing context, meaning what were the circumstances of the situation? And then ultimately, what was the result? What happened? What was the takeaway? What was the deliverable? So I mentioned action verbs earlier. Um, I am going to send a list that is more robust than this, but this way you can add some really strong action verbs and um, use a variety of, of verbiage rather than using helped over and over again or created over and over again. Um, it's just going to, to make your resume look that much stronger and that much more robust.
So you want to be aiming for at least two bullet points per experience that you are listing on your resume. That said, there's not a hard formula in terms of you need to have X number of bullet points per experience that you're listing. And it may be that you only have you know, one or two bullet points for an experience, and you may have four bullet points listed for another experience. It really just, um, as you're creating this resume, as you're tailoring this resume, it's up to you to be evaluating what experiences are going to bring you the most leverage as you're applying for opportunities. Um, and then list your bullets um, in order of relevance. So you wanna be listing the most important things of your responsibilities at the top of that section. Um, and then also be mindful of tenses as you are um, creating your resume. So if it is a current position that you're in, um, make sure that you're, use, that you're using present tense. And if it is a past experience, make sure that that is past tense. Um, so if you're no longer in that role, just make sure that, that um, those tenses are, are very clear. It's going to make your resume look that much stronger. You definitely want to brag about yourself. This is a time to really showcase and highlight yourself. That being said, do not lie on your resume. Do not um, embellish skills. Um, I have seen that unfortunately come up um, in, in some situations in the past, in my past recruiting life, and just uh, don't embellish. Be honest with your experiences and your skills. Um, and then be direct and concise. Again, we are aiming for a one-page document. Um, so that means your real estate is big. Um, so that's why we talk about font sizes and it's really important to, to keep between that 10 to 12 page or size font. Um, and you don't wanna be too wordy. You wanna make those bullet points be really clean, really concise. Um, and you can also incorporate, we talked about coursework earlier, but you can also incorporate coursework that you've done. Um, if you've written any papers, if you've had any publications, you can certainly include that in your resume. So ultimately, what kind of skills are employers looking for? Obviously, that's going to be dictated in part by, um, by the opportunity that you're applying for. But just kind of by and large, um, employers are looking for excellent problem solving and critical thinking skills, excellent oral and written communication, teamwork, leadership, organizational skills, and project management. And again, we want to think about those um, transferable skills that maybe you don't necessarily think you have. Um, that's why I say like coursework is so important to include um, on your resume if it is going to be substituting some, some other experience. Um, student organizations, this is where those leadership roles come into play. Um, volunteering. Have you won any awards? So these are those soft transferable skills that I, if I'm reading your resume and I see that you are a leader in a student organization that tells me that you are a leader without explicitly listing, I have leadership skills. Um, if, you are, if you've won an award or an honor, that tells me that, you know, um, maybe you have excellent time management skills, you have strong academics, strong project management. So these are the implicit things that are inferred by the, by the things that you're including in your resume. Um, so here are some examples of, of kind of what we're talking about here when we talk about um, impact statements as it relates to past experience. So we have someone here who was a summer camp counselor. Great, great job. Um, so they have listed on their resume and it's good um planned activities for summer youth camp like it's it's a solid bullet point it's what it's what this person did um however when you add um some of that those strong action verbs and you add some context and um some results it just makes it that much stronger so you go from planned activities for summer youth camp to then 
developed and implemented orientation programs for new volunteers to ensure safety and learning goals were achieved for all campers. And that is so much stronger. And that provides me, who the, the person who's reviewing the resume, with so much more information about what you were doing over the summer. What were your responsibilities? What did you accomplish? Um, we'll go down to the, to the tennis instructor one. So this person was a tennis instructor and they taught beginner through advanced tennis lessons to children and adults. It's true, it's what they were doing. They were teaching tennis. However, when you add that context, context when you add the results, um, when you add those really strong action verbs, that goes from, from you know, teaching tennis from beginners to advanced players to developed in individualized skill-based instruction for adults and children to achieve optimum skill development and prepare students for competition. So that is already just so much stronger. It tells me more about the student population. It tells me more a little bit about what exactly you were doing. Um, and the responsibility of, you know, you weren't just teaching tennis, you were creating individualized instruction for children and adults. So those are two different populations. Um, so that's just, that just provides so much more of a robust picture. So as you are thinking through your action context and, or context action and result, um, some questions that you might want to ask yourself. Um, and again, I will be sending the, the slide deck to Olivia, so you will be receiving a copy of this. How did you spend your time when you were at that experience? How did you spend your time when you were, you know, serving on a student organization? What were your responsibilities? What problems were you trying to solve? What was the overall goal? Why was your work important? Did you achieve your attended goal? And can you quantify the outcome? And I say quantify when it's relevant and when you're able to, because again, that just provides a much clearer scope um, as to the, the tasks and the situations at hand. So thinking about extracurriculars, as they relate to the ability to list them on, on a resume. So this person was volunteering at the Red Cross. They were um, recruiting and training volunteers. They were creating and developing a marketing strategy to increase donor turnout, and they coordinated logistics for four semi-annual blood drives. So as you can see, when we talk about skills from these contributions and these volunteer experiences. We're seeing communication, which we know is really important to employers, whether that be verbal or oral uh, written or oral communication. We see problem solving and collaboration with um, the creation of these, these annual blood drives. Um, we're seeing leadership with this, this person taking initiative to develop a marketing strategy. Um, so we're seeing these themes and, and these um, really important skill sets from employers. This person has already been, been utilizing those leadership skills, those communication skills, those problem solving skills, those collaboration skills. So as you think through those probing questions, um, think about what, what skills you, you've been utilizing. So, Skills. So there are, there are a few different um, ways that you can categorize and list skills. Um, language is a big one. Any computer or software skills that you have, any, you know, programming, developing skills, anything like that. Research um, is also an important skill to highlight. Um, and make sure that you are also focusing on the hard skills as well and not necessarily the soft skills. Um, you don't necessarily in your skills need to list, I'm an excellent, I'm excellent at written and oral communication. If you're a, excellent, if you excel at written and oral communication, you're not going to need to tell me that. I'm going to be able to see that on your resume and as I'm reviewing your materials and as you're, as I'm reading through how you're describing things. 
Um, and you can also add skills, um, specific skills in their own section. Um, that said, I have seen people list skills as kind of like a catch all where they include their language skills, their software skills um, in kind of one catch all as additional skills rather than listing them out. So there's just a lot of flexibility and a lot of a lot of creative room to kind of play as you are creating your resume. So as we continue to talk about skills and look at resume examples, um, we see that this person has leadership skills, computer skills, and activities listed separately. They could easily have listed them as additional skills, but this person has chosen to list those skills out. And it could be that they are applying for an opportunity um, where they're going to be leading a team of people. They might be um, applying to serve as a member of a board. Um, so there, there are many reasons why um, you may want to explicitly call out specific skill sections. So some common mistakes or um, things that you, you want to be watching out for. Um, make sure that your dates and locations are all formatted the same throughout your resume. Make sure that you are using space appropriately on the resume. Make sure, so this is when, when I mentioned those margin sizes and that text size, this is what we're talking about. Um, you don't wanna have too much or, or similarly too little white space. Um, you wanna have those really strong bullet points that we talked about. And um, as you are adding extracurricular activities, project experience or volunteering, keep in mind that you may have a past experience that's not currently listed on your resume that may serve you better. Um, and if you are a college student, you can feel free to um, include high school beyond its relevance. I feel that, you know, sometimes students enter college and they don't think that what they did in high school matters, but it does. Like I said, every, um, every opportunity that you've had um, should be an opportunity for you to create transferable skills and utilize those transferable skills. And a little fun fact about applicant tracking systems. I am going to ask for a question here. <laughs> um, does anyone, and if people want to raise their hand, does anyone know what an applicant tracking system is? Or have you heard about applicant tracking systems? If not, it's totally OK. It's kind of a very um, hot and up and coming um, system that, that employers will utilize. Um, so applicant tracking system is a system that um, employers will use to do an initial intake and evaluation of a resume. Um, so it is going to be AI automated. So when you're working with applicant tracking systems, think, um, you know, typically larger organizations think about, you know, Google, um, Facebook, you know, the really big, um, big organizations. Uh, City of Detroit also uses applicant tracking an applicant tracking system. Um, so what that is, is initially you're going to be submitting your resume and the computer is going to be comparing your, your experience that you have listed on your resume versus the job description. So this is why it's really important to be very intentional as you're writing your resume um, and to be tailoring your resume for every opportunity that you're applying to. Um, because the system will need a certain number of points before you can move on to the next step. Um, so make sure that you are using exact wording that, that mimics that posting. Um, don't use columns when you are um, adding or uploading your resume to an applicant tracking system. The applicant tracking systems by and large um, are not able to read um, if your resume is in a column format. Be very careful about typos. Um, and ultimately, when you are submitting, not only to an applicant tracking system, but when you are um, 
uploading your resume to to an opportunity, make sure that you're uploading it and submitting it in the recommended file type. Um, by and large, that is going to be a PDF. Um, I am going to strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that if you are sending a resume um, or a writing sample, anything to a future employer, make sure that it's a PDF so that the formatting does not get all wonky and messed up um, in transit. So I know we covered a lot of ground and I've been talking at you for a very long time. Um, any questions? Can Starbucks be an applicant track system or is that considered not one? So it, it could, um, it just depends on what opportunity you're applying for. Okay, yeah, I was just wondering, but mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, it's getting more and more common with like the larger organizations where they're receiving like thousands of, of resumes a week. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> See, we had some questions in the chat. So oh, perfect. Autumn wanted to know what does putting course work look into a resume look like? Yeah, so um happy to elaborate on that a little bit. So coursework, um, I tend to encourage you to add coursework as it relates to an opportunity. So um, you know, let's say that you are applying for a um, a, a software developer, let's say. And maybe you don't have hard practical, maybe you haven't had an internship where you've been working on software development, but maybe you've taken a lot of coursework and classwork. Um, that's when you can list that. So that tells me as an employer that, okay, maybe you haven't had the opportunity yet to apply these skills that you've learned um, in a practical uh, real world setting. Um, but looking at the coursework, I know that you know how to do it so that you can use that to kind of bolster um, experience. Does that answer your question? I'll take it since Autumn's not responding that Autumn has okay. uh, what they need. What section would you put it in? I would list it under education. Perfect. And then Ziomara had a question about um, dual enrolled students mm -hmm. with school information. Yep. Um, yeah. So when you're putting school information, you would list both of those um, institutional organizations. Um, and really, you know, it, it's up to you what you want to list first. Um, so as an example at the Ford School, we see a lot of graduate students at Ford that are double enrolled, you know, with School of Information, School of Social Work, Ross School. Um, typically, students will list the institution that they started at first. Um, but that said, you, I guess, preference, and you can use your judgment um, and, and consider what opportunity you're applying to, which um, which program you want to list first. So hopefully that helps clarify. I had a question about um, going back to the previous question. So would we have to put a title saying relevant coursework or just writing the specific bullet points? Yeah, I would put relevant coursework. Okay, perfect. And then uh, Cheney asked, would I list GPA with education or honors and awards? Yep, so I would actually list all of that um, underneath your education. And that is how I have, uh, granted I haven't updated it in a while, um, but that is where I have my um, <laughs> my stuff listed from undergrad is, is under my education section as well. Um, all right, so we have another question um, about um, like including a summary, would it be above education or under? Um, and would you recommend that? So 
if you are, and again, it's not my resume, but this is my uh, my unfiltered advice. Um, if you're going to list a summary, I would list it at the very top of um, of your resume above experience, but below your name and your contact information. So I would sandwich it in between there. Um, if you're going to use a summary statement, I would be very cautious of that. And um, if you're doing a career pivot, that's when I would encourage you to, to list a summary. Maybe if you have, um, you know, a lot of experience, maybe you, you know, went to school for accounting and you built your, you started to build your professional career in accounting, and then you decided to go back to school and study public policy, for example. Um, sometimes that summary helps to provide a little additional context as to why you're making that shift. Um, but similarly, the summary can come back um, to haunt you a little bit because if you are applying for an opportunity that is in no way, shape or form related to your summary, if I'm reviewing that resume, I read it as you're not interested in the job because you've clearly listed that you're interested in X, Y, and Z and you wanna build your career in um, A, B, and C. And if you're applying to an opportunity where again, none of that's relevant or related, you it's very likely that your resume is gonna get passed over. So grain of salt with the summary section. <laughs> All right. And then um, we do have some other questions in the chat that I just, um, Victor, I see your question about like, how do you find jobs and tailoring the descriptions? We're going to be talking about that um, in our next portion. So I just wanted to let you know, I saw your question. Um, same with um, Langston. Um, and then, but Julia did have a question um, saying, so can it be irrelevant if we haven't had much experience with the opportunity and that we might not want to include it? Is this, as it relates to the summary statement or is um, this a, a separate question? Sorry, I, I guess, uh, Julia, so she said oh, the summary. summary. Yeah. Um, yes, so I would say, yes, it could be, repetitive and irrelevant. So if I'm looking at your resume and I see um, everything's aligned with opportunities that you're applying for, um, I can tell that from your experience and your cover letter and um, by the fact that you've applied for the job. So I would use that, those extra few lines um, to add some, some additional information, you know, maybe some skills, um, coursework, that kind of stuff. Awesome. I wouldn't say it's irrelevant, but I would say that that space could be much suited for something else. All right. Do we have any other questions for Casey? And I will, yeah, I will go ahead and, and stop sharing. And um, like I said, I will be sending out this, um, a copy of this PowerPoint. So you will have all of the slides and I will send you a, a much more robust um, action verb list as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Casey. Um, yeah. And Victor, we will make sure we're going to um, talk about your question. Just Victor asked, you know, about, um, like if you don't have a lot to put on your resume, especially, you know, if you are just entering the workforce um, and there's just kind of a lot of space of what, what to put on there. Um, but Olivia, is that something that you want Casey to touch on or do you want us to talk about that in our small groups? Um, we'll definitely address it in small groups, but I think an additional perspective is always helpful. So Casey, if you have a thought about it, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, so if you are, and again, this is my my two cents, and it's always really interesting when you talk about resumes because you could you could talk to someone on my team and they could tell you something different. So for what it's worth, this is this is my two cents. Um, so the the summary could serve you very well if you're just entering the workforce. Um, I also think, in and you do need to be very careful with this. Um, also, potentially adding. Um, additional information about yourself, like any interests that you have, any traveling that you've done, 
Um, when I was working in human resources, if someone listed a fun fact, I would always, always, always ask them about it. Um, so that's some other things that the, you can potentially list on there as well. Um, because even though it may not seem relevant, if you tell me that you've been ballroom dancing since you were five years old, I already know <laughs> so much about you that then you probably thought that you would think that you were listing on a resume because it shows, um, you know, a dedicated interest. It shows, um, I already said dedication, but it shows commitment. So, so there's a lot, um, there's a lot of information that you can learn about a person um, based off of their resume, which is why I'm so passionate about about resumes. I love them. I think they're great. And I hope that you guys will love them too. All right. We have uh, one other question. It says um, from Dewan, what if the experience I have isn't what the job is like looking for or required? Do you have any guidance on that? Yeah. So if you are going into, if you're, if you're looking at an opportunity, um, and you don't hit all of the all of the requirements, that is totally okay. I would say if you meet 70% of the requirements, absolutely throw your hat in the ring. The worst thing that is going to happen is you're not gonna hear from them. You're gonna get a no. And it's a no, you know, life goes on. But <laughs> um, if you don't throw your hat in the ring, then you'll never know. But I say, at least, um, you know, 70, 75%, because when you're looking at a job description, that is the ideal, um, the hiring manager's ideal. <laughs> so um, that is like their, their master wish list, right? So like when you were a kid at Christmas and you listed everything that you wanted, um, that's awesome if you got everything that you wanted as a kid for Christmas, I did not. Um, but if you, you know, if you get some of those things, because sometimes those people just don't exist that have all of these skill sets. Um, and especially for like years of experience and salary range, that's um, more often than not a manager's ideal person. Sometimes they don't exist. So if you have 70 or 75%, I would say absolutely go for it um, because you don't know what the rest of the pool looks like. And honestly, the job that I have now, um, I had about 90% of the qualifications and I very nearly didn't apply for it because I had a little bit of imposter syndrome. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to, um, to still apply as long as you, even if you're not a match with hundred percent of, of the things that are there, you know, that said, if you're a match for 10% of the things, it might not be the best use of your time, but that's a, that's a call for you to make. <laughs> 